Hi students, this is Alex here. In this video, we are going to discuss how to find whether the function is concave upward or concave downward in the given interval. Concave upward is also known as convex downward. In the same way, concave downward is also known as convex upward. Now let's see what are the steps involved. First step for the given function, we have to find its first derivative f dash of x and its second derivative f double dash of x. In second step, we have to equate f double dash of x to 0. Then we get x values. Suppose we are getting two values a and b. This value will come from the factors x minus a into x minus b. Suppose if this is f double dash of x and equating to the 0 we get two values and in the third step we have to take a number line and the number line starts from minus infinity and end at infinity in case if it is an algebraic function. Suppose if it is a trigonometric function, it will start from 0 to 2 pi. After drawing the number line, we have to take the two values which we got by equating the second derivative to 0, a and b. So now we got three intervals. So we have to make one tabular column in which first we write intervals which is first interval is minus infinity comma a then a comma b then b comma infinity here we have to find the sine of f double dash of x so we are going to take the factors x minus a into x minus b and we are going to check the sign then here we will check about the nature whether it is concave up or concave down. So in this each interval let us take in between one value for example this is x1 in this interval x2 and this interval x3 all these values we have to substitute in the f double dash f double dash of x1 we have to check positive or negative here f double dash of x2 we have to check whether it is positive or negative then f double dash of x3 we have to check whether it is positive or negative so if it is positive then we can say concave upward if positive or it is concave down if negative. So in the same way we will determine the nature in the other intervals also. In this way we complete this box and in each interval it is possible to for us to get whether it is concave up or concave down. It depends upon the sign of the f double dash of x. And the next step after finding where it is concave up and where it is concave down, we can find the point of inflection. The point of inflection is nothing but the point where it changes the nature whether it is concave upward to downward or concave downward to upward so where it changes the nature so here we got two points a and b and suppose at that point for example suppose if in this interval if it is concave up and in the next interval if it is concave down so here it is concave up here it is concave down since it changes the nature at the point A because this interval ends at A and here it starts at A. So at the point A it changes the nature 
for example from concave upward to concave downward then the point is called as a point of inflection so it is possible to find the point of inflection after finding the interval where it is concave upward or concave downward 